Hello everyone. In this lesson you can learn to program a header that magically changes as the user scrolls down the page a little bit. When the user scrolls back to the top of the page, we'll make the header change back to its original display mode. Let's take a look at the finished product of the exercise. I'll grab the scroll bar and I'll begin to scroll down the page. Now when I do, watch the header and the menu system. See, the header collapsed or became smaller or went into an incognito mode while the user's scrolling down all the content of the page. When the user scrolls back to the top, watch the header. You'll see, it all comes back along with the menu system. And it happens in an animated fashion. So it has a cool animated effect as well. And I made it happen to when the scroll reaches around 150 pixels down into the page. And that's really the basic guts of the lesson. You want to be able to listen for the scroll event and then you want to evaluate if it reaches 150 pixels down into the page. That's when you want to make the header change. Okay, right, we're going to begin with the bare bones of an HTML5 web document. The first thing we'll do is add the little bit of HTML we're going to need for this example. First we need a div with an ID equal to page top. Let's make sure we go down a couple of lines and close that div. Now we're going to put a child div inside of that div. And this one's going to have an ID of menu. And we can type menu system in the inner HTML of that div. And this is where you would put all of your link elements or your button elements that make up your menu system. Or really you don't even have to have a menu system there. I just wanted to show an example of how to collapse two items. This way you can collapse or expand or change the properties, any CSS properties that you want to change in an animated fashion for any elements that you have. So you can reposition things when the menu or the header change. You can make things fade in and out. You can make the height change, which is what I'm going to do in this lesson. We're going to make the heights change to create the effect that you saw in the demo. And for the inner HTML of the header, which I named page top. I'm just going to put the word header. Now underneath our page top container, we're going to have another container that is the wrapper for the rest of the content, the normal default content that would be on your page that the user is going to scroll up and down. So I named that div wrapper and inside of it I just put a little script that's going to put some dummy page content, many lines. It's going to put 40 lines of dummy page content. It's going to be 40 H2 elements. And we're using a simple for loop for that in JavaScript. And you don't have to concern yourself with that because you would have actual page content inside of your wrapper element. And that's it for the HTML. Now we'll apply some CSS to this page top element, the menu element, and the wrapper. So here in the style element, we're going to pop in the rule for the page top. Now the way we get the animated effect is simply putting the transition property on it. And we put the other properties in CSS that we want to affect in an animated sort of way. So we're going to affect the height and the padding of that header in an animated fashion. Now when the change comes, it's going to happen in JavaScript. But even though the change is going to happen in JavaScript, for instance, we're just going to instruct JavaScript to change the CSS of this element. And since we have applied this transition, it's going to be an animated effect. We don't have to put any animation or reference any animations when we change the property in JavaScript. All we have to do is simply change the property from one value to the next. And the, and the fact that we have this transition property in place means it will be an animated effect even though JavaScript is going to be the technology that's instructing the change. Now the next rule we're going to put in place is for the menu div that's the child div inside of page top which is this guy right here. So these properties affect that div and this one's only going to have an animated effect on the height. And finally, in the CSS, we're going to add a rule for our wrapper div, which is the wrapper that wraps all of your normal page content. We're going to make the margin top 230 pixels. That way, 
it rests where we want beneath the magic header. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse all of the CSS just so it's not in our way visually. And we're going to work in the script element now to add the JavaScript needed to make these changes happen when the scroll position reaches a certain point. So in order to listen for the vertical scrolling of the page, we're just going to add a listener to the window. Window .add event listener, the scroll event. So when the user scrolls with their mouse wheel or by dragging the bar or any way they scroll the page, this Y scroll function is going to fire off. So we need to write that Y scroll function right now. So we type in function, Y scroll, open close parentheses, open in curly brace and close in curly brace. Now the first thing we'll do is get object references with two elements on the page that we want to affect. It's page top and the menu. So we can put those variables here. And actually, we can assign those variables outside of the function, which would be a little more efficient if we put var page top, comma, menu. Now we've assigned those variables first thing in our program, and they'll be available inside of this function as well. So we say for the page top variable, we make that equal to document.getElementById page top. So now we have an object reference for the page top, an object reference for the menu. Now let's go ahead and put one more variable called Y pose. And that's going to represent the Y position of where the user has scrolled down into the page. Now in your Y scroll function, it's easy to get that value. So we say Y pose is equal to window.pageY offset. So you can get the value or the number of pixels that the user has scrolled down into the page by using the window.pageY offset property. Now, once you have that number, all you have to do is put a simple if else condition statement. It's very simple logic. Your program just has to be able to read the scroll position of where the user is in the scroll position of the page and then do things according to that. That's how simple it is. Okay, so let me put in that if else condition statement right now and I'll explain it to you. So here it is, a simple if else condition statement. So we write if the Y pose is greater than 150 pixels and you can set this number to anything you want. If you want to happen a little sooner, just put that on 100. If you want to happen a little later when they scroll down a little further into the page, then put this on a greater number like 400. So I just said, if it gets to 150 pixels, then the page top element's height is going to be changed to 36 pixels. The page top element's padding top is going to be changed to 8 pixels. And you can see from their original setting when the page loads, we have, it has a uh, padding top of 50 pixels and a height of 120. So we're giving it a pretty drastic change in height and the padding. Then we're telling the menu style.height to equal zero and just go away completely. Now, else if the Y position is less than 150, this else condition is going to fire off this code and the menu will go back to its original full display state. 120 pixel height, padding top of 50, and then the menu comes back into view for the user to use. It's that simple. There's really nothing complex going on at all. The math is simple. The logic is simple. Everything is simple. There's no frameworks that are needed. It's a really cool effect that requires very little mental work to produce. And I've tested this in all the major popular browsers. Let's take one last look at the finished effect. So when I scroll down a little bit, either with my mouse or by dragging the bar, as I scroll up and down the page, the header and the menu system magically change in an animated fashion. If you enjoyed the video you just watched, click on the subscribe button to tune into Adam's channel. He produces new videos on a regular basis. Below the subscribe button are a few more of his video tutorials that other viewers have found to be helpful or inspiring. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.